This is KGW News at 5. Portland police are investigating a homicide after a man was found dead inside his home in the Lentz neighborhood of southeast Portland. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm John Adams. We're still lurking, uh, working to learn more about exactly what happened to this man. He was found dead Friday morning. Sydney Dorner spoke with neighbors today to find out what they knew about him. I'm here in the Lentz neighborhood where Portland police got a report for a missing person on Friday morning. Police say they initially did a search to try to find him, but figured out he was locked inside his home and dead. <laughs> Portland police are now investigating the homicide of a man who was found dead inside his home. Neighbors we spoke with say they didn't know much about him. He seemed like he was in his working outside a lot on cars and motorcycles, but they kept to themselves like they didn't interact with the neighbors too much. The investigation started off as a missing persons report that led them to do an extensive search. We noticed some police cars around 1230 kind of arriving to the scene. After that, officers got information that he may be inside the locked house. Police then forced entry to do a welfare check. Once inside, they found the man dead. Portland police say suspicious circumstances at the scene led officers to alert homicide detectives. Southeast Suncrest Drive between Southeast 92nd Avenue and Southeast Grandview Terrace were cut off for several hours while homicide detectives took a further look. And stayed here until at least um, 9 o'clock last night. They're still here. The on-site investigation is now done with roads back open. The cause and manner of death are still unknown along with the man's identity. Police say they will release his name after family is informed. For right now, Portland police say no suspects or suspect has been located. No arrests have been made. Detectives do not believe there is a danger to the community as of right now. I mean, I'm not concerned about anything in the neighborhood. I just think um, it's probably just a very individual situation. Portland police will be releasing more details. Sydney Dorner, KGW News. Well, right now, people in at least seven homes in Astoria are dealing with a slow moving mudslide. Now, this happened at Grand Avenue in 27th Street on the east side of Astoria. These pictures were sent to us by a resident in the area who says they were evacuated. 27th Street has been closed this afternoon. Amtrak services are once again disrupted between Portland and Seattle because of another landslide in Philida. And it's the third time this week in that exact same location. Well, right now all trains are canceled until at least 245 tomorrow afternoon. They say they're working to get buses to affected passengers. Well, if for some reason you were planning on swimming in the Willamette this weekend, maybe make other plans. The heavy rain has caused a combined sewage overflow. That's when stormwater and sewage dumps into the river when the big pipes can't keep up and there will be increased bacteria in the river for about two days. Combined sewer overflows are supposed to be rare since the completion of the big pipe project back in 2011, but there have already been five since the start of 2024. And that's as many as we usually get for the entire year. Overflows are triggered usually by heavy rain and snowfall. By the way, we checked the big pipe tracker. It's sitting at 90% right now. Well, Joe Ranieri joining us now. And Joe, it's been a strange month uh, of January. A lot of rainfall, some cold temperatures. Now some maybe record-breaking warmth. Hey, uh, John, how does the uh, low to mid-60s sound for uh, late January? Does that sound good to you? I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's Absolutely. a good chance that we're going to be sitting at uh, 64, 65 come this time tomorrow. It's not we're not going to be seeing, you know, glorious blue skies above, but I'll take warm temperatures uh, any day of the week, considering what we are experiencing uh, really throughout this month. It's really been up and down. And speaking more of that Astoria slide, that is an area that is not uh, pretty used to seeing some slides out there. Of course, a couple years ago, there was a house that completely slid off its foundation because of the heavy rain that we've been experiencing. We could be seeing those showers continue here the next few hours hours, maybe to early tomorrow morning, but this is what we've seen since midnight, about an eighth of a tenth of, uh, of an inch of rain at the Portland International Airport. Take a look at Tillamook, over two inches, closing in on two inches over in Astoria right now, and rainfall amounts will be pretty light tonight and into tomorrow, but heading into tomorrow and basically uh, Monday, we will be seeing very mild conditions, but again, a big warm up for tomorrow and into uh, Monday as well. Talk more about that and just how warm things get the next few days. All right, Joe, thank you. Well, a traffic alert if you're planning to cross the Willamette this weekend. The Morrison Bridge is closed until 5 o'clock Monday morning. 
Crews have some maintenance and cleanup work to do on the bridge's gears. That work will also continue next weekend when the bridge will be closed again from Friday evening until early Monday morning. Alaska Airlines is slowly starting to return Boeing 737 MAX 9s to the air three weeks after a piece of a fuselage blew off over Portland. While the exact cause remains under investigation, regulators say the aircraft with proper inspection is safe to fly. Catherine Cook spoke with passengers who were on board one of those first flights. The flight landed here around 715 from Las Vegas, with many on board having spent some time rolling the dice in casinos. As for how risky the flight felt, many tell us they didn't even realize they were boarding a MAX 9 this evening. They would have liked to have known. Back in the air, Alaska Airlines resumed flying Boeing 737 MAX 9s Friday. The first flight departed from SeaTac to San Diego. The plane was part of the first fleet to have completed inspections. All MAX 9s had been grounded since January 5th after a door plug blew out minutes after takeoff from PDX. That forced Alaska 1282 to make an emergency landing. Federal transportation investigators are still working to determine what went wrong. Well, we're getting, we're getting the door. We're at, the end of the at PDX on this night, the first MAX 9 touched down from Las Vegas. Tom Coots was on board. I did not know, but after I sat down, I saw the seat card that it was a 737 MAX 9, and I thought, oh, okay, we're flying again, and I didn't think too much about it, actually. Other passengers, like Robin West, thought a lot about it. If you'd known it was a MAX 9? I would have asked to train to another flight. Robin says she hadn't heard that the FAA approved an inspection and maintenance process for the planes on Wednesday, clearing the way for airlines to resume flying MAX 9s. I think they should have told us at least that we are flying, the planes were changing to this type of airline. It was scary, that's for sure. I had a lot of anxiety when it first happened. Stephanie just flew here from L.A. She wasn't on a MAX 9, but recent events have influenced how her family, including her baby son, travels. Instead of having him be a lap infant, we purchased another seat so that we could have him strapped into a car seat just because I was concerned about what could happen. Alaska says inspections on all 65 of its MAX 9s should be completed by the end of next week, allowing the airline to resume its complete flight schedule. United plans to resume flights on MAX 9 jets on Sunday. I arrived here safely, so all is good. <laughs> In Northeast Portland, Catherine Cook, KGW News. Well, coming up in